up guys, it's your boy, Barca boy 103 Today we're going to be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. To be honest, there's not that much news, a lot of repetition. I was not going to make a video, but I'm like, you know what? I'm so damn bored. Why the hell not? We have some, you know, decent updates, but not enough to make a really good in-depth video. But again, I was bored and I said, screw it. Why not? Firstly, big news about Juan Foyth. Villarreal have set the price for his exit this summer, and I do have the price for it. And Barcelona are negotiating on Juan Foyth's side with his entourage and his agent to try and greet personal terms and then go for a bid for Villarreal. But that bid could be proving to be difficult. We'll talk about that. But of course, the main talk for Barcelona right now are exits, exits, exits. Firstly, on Frankie De Jong, some updates about Man United not being in the race. We'll talk about that very quickly. But the big one, in my opinion, the one I'm very, very scared about, Pierre Emerick Aubameyang. Chelsea are preparing their second bid, and it will be big. Our hearing right now will come close to Barcelona's evaluation. The question now is will the club accept it or not? Chavi pushing for him staying, but Thomas Tuchel is pushing for a signing. We have some updates about Des as well, how United won him. Quick updates on Bernardo Silva, and also a big update as well on the contract renewal of Pablo Gave. But before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button down below. Let's try to get the 300 likes in this video. Be very much appreciated. Also, if you're new, make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already. And let's get into it. Let's start off with the transfer news over the past 24 hours. Now, the first player that we have been linked with is Bernardo Silva. And there's more confirmation that the player is desperate for the move and has also agreed personal terms as well. Now, Gold come out saying that there is a full agreement between Barcelona and Bernardo Silva. The club will make an offer soon, but it won't come close to the 100 million euros that Man City apparently want, according to the UK media. But the relationship between Man City and Barcelona will be key for this operation. And also, I believe Richard Romano as well came out saying that uh, personal terms of Bernardo Silva and Barcelona will not be a problem. He's not saying it's agreed, but during those negotiations, it will be a problem and that Bernardo Silva wants the move. Again, I think this will all pick up at some point next week. I feel like right now the club are focused on getting Kunde registered, maybe signing Alonso. We'll talk about that, of course, later on. Uh, defensive reinforcements as well. Uh, dealing with the Frankie de Jong future as well. I think like right now Bernardo Silva is the icing on the cake for the transfer window for Barcelona, like we heard from Cotrone a few days ago. I can't see us making moves until after the Magic is real so that at the end of what to this weekend. I think next week will be the big week for Bernardo because of course keep in mind two weeks I believe or next week one week let me just check no one week so there's only one week left from next week for the transfer window and keep in mind Man City do need a replacement if they do sell Bernardo so we have to give them time as well we can't just go in last second bid they'll accept it of course if the player asks they will leave Pep does not want players that want to leave blah 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 but there's you know boundaries right so we'll wait and see on Bernardo again I think it would depend on other things. It's just my opinion. We'll have to wait and see what the club decide. But there's no other club are in the race for Bernardo. They see him as a market opportunity. A player fits quality worth or on the market, should I say, for around 60 to 80 million euros, according to reports, is an absolute bargain. So we'll wait and see on Bernardo. But again, Barcelona are making moves, making some advancements, and they will put in and start official talks with Man City very, very soon. But currently in the transfer window, the priority for Barcelona is to reinforce both fullback positions on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, firstly on the right hand side, the priority without a shadow of a doubt is Juan Foyt, the Argentine from Villarreal. Now Gerard de Romero has come out saying that Mateo Eliman and Jody Cruyff met with Juan Foyt's agent yesterday to discuss his possible arrival, but Villarreal will be tough in negotiations as Juan Foyt is a vital player for them. Now Gaston Adele, who writes for TYC Sports, number one source around Argentinian player news, he came out saying that Barcelona are in negotiation with Juan Foyth's entourage. The club plans to make a contract or proposal to the player and make an offer to Villarreal very, very soon. So he's saying, look, Barcelona right now talking with his entourage, trying to agree personal terms. Once that's agreed, they'll go in and talk with Villarreal. Now, Cat Radio came out saying that Xavi and the coaching staff really like Juan Foyth. They think that the Argentine fits in really well. He is a real option for the right back position, but of course, Barcelona need to comply with FFV, financial fair play regulations as well. So Xavi has given the green light for the signing. He likes the player, thinks he can come in and do a good job. A bit under the level of Aspenacuita, who, who Chavi won, of course, from beforehand, but of course, Juan Foyt, good option. And to be honest, in Chavi's eyes, better than nothing. That's how I feel. But 
The question now is the price. If we have got the price, it has been leaked and it's coming in from Javi Mata, who is the number one source around Villarreal news. He came out saying that Villarreal want 42 million euros for Juan Foyth and they don't want to include players in the possible deal as well. Under these conditions, it is complicated, of course, for Barcelona to complete this deal. Now, I'm wondering, 42 million euros is a bit of a weird figure. Why not 40 or 50? 42 million euros is Juan Foyth's current release clause at Villarreal. So Villarreal asking for his release clause if you paid in full upfront or else a player will not be leaving. Now, of course, that will make the operation very, very, very difficult. Now, he says there as well that they don't want players included as well. But Mundo Portivo came out saying that Barcelona could try to include a player in the operation for Juan Foyth. And one of the options is Abdi, who is wanted and liked by Unai Emery. <laughs> You're going to include one of the most, you know, promising up-and-coming wingers in La Liga for Juan Foyth. <laughs> Come on, man. Let's be real. Well, I'll chuck in Braithwin and Titi, but that's pretty much it. I would not, I could include Abdi on a loan. Hey, give us a um, reduced price. We'll give you Abdi one or two year loan. I wouldn't mind that. Of course, one year in my opinion, but on a permanent, no thank you. So now we're seeing big price tag put on there. We may have to look at other options now under these conditions. Barcelona have no chance. They probably want to offer, I would say, 20 million euros, maybe probably like 15 plus 10 in variables. I would say that's probably what Barcelona were thinking of. But Villarreal, shut that down. Release clause paid in full or else. That pretty much means when they say when they ask for the release clause, I mean they don't want to negotiate whatsoever. Barcelona keep calling them. Release clause. Yep, uh, El Mateo, release clause. That's what's going to happen. So this deal will be difficult unless, of course, Villarreal changed their demands. Juan Foyth may able maybe maybe push the move once he reaches personal terms with Barcelona. I'm not quite too sure, but I feel like the other club will have to look at backup options. But one option who is going to be on that list for Barcelona, on that five list that Gerard Romero gave us a few nights ago, but is now no longer an option, is Diego Delo from Manchester United. Gabriel Sanz from Deportivo came out saying that Diego Delo is not an option for Barcelona. Barcelona have other options on the right back position list, and Delo feels at home in Manchester. But Manchester United did offer the right back in the Frankie de Young operation, but Barcelona rejected the offer. So, the low, not after Barcelona, they have a few more ahead of him apparently. They, he, he kind of feels at home at Manchester, blah, blah, blah. During the Frankie negotiation, he was offered, but Barcelona said no. So, the low, out of the question. Now, if you go back to that list, who was second place? It was Thomas Mounier. And Sport will not shut up about Thomas Mounier as well. They come out, oh, Barcelona going to put in a 10 million euro bid. They're going to go for him, blah, blah, blah. Keep your eyes on that. Of course, the other two were uh, Frank Pong from Leverkusen and then Juan Basaka from United. So, listen, and looking that great. Juan of Boy is probably the best out of the bad bunch, but even then, he was like, if you're going to rate him like on a one, if, if we're going to rate him one to 10, Asper Quetta, I think, in my opinion, would have been a seven, if, especially for Chavi, because he wanted him. I think Juan Foyth is probably a five, because of course, he's on the list, but he's not like probably top two, top three. Imagine Thomas Munier, he's probably a six or seven. So, We'll wait and see on the right back position, but no doubt the club are going to go for right back this summer at the request of Chavi. He needs reinforcement on that right hand side. He will get it. The question now is who will it be? But on the left hand side of the back four, Chavi has received his reinforcement and it will be Marcus Alonso. Now it is Wednesday. We all thought this deal would get the green light this week. It will get the green light at some point, 100%, but it will not get the green light until Barcelona are able to register him. And Dupolo from Deportivo came out saying the signing of Marcus Alonso is already done, but the club will not make the official announcement until his registration is assured. To ensure the registration, the club must confirm departures or salary reductions as soon as possible. Now, keep in mind, Kunde is next in line. Apparently, Chavi wants to start him this weekend at the Anahueta against Real Sociedad. So, if the register goes Kunde first, and then Alonso. Again, I think the exit of Memphis Depay will make some room for Kunde. I think right now the club have a little bit of room. That Memphis wide that room. And then you can bring in Jules Kunde in that. I feel like we still need another low, maybe of a youngster. Uh, Braithwood, um, Titi, maybe even a Frankie salary reduction. PK salary reduction to get Alonso in there. I think right now Alonso, 1000% will not play this weekend. I think probably even the next game against... I believe Real by the Lid, he'll be a big doubt for that as well. But I do believe at some point this week, 
it will be announced thursday friday saturday sunday we will get the here we go i think one of those four days from romano of course and maybe a few days after that we'll get the official announcement but again the left back position for barcelona is no longer a worry because the reinforcement has been secured in marcus alonso let's now discuss the players who have been rumored to leave barcelona over the past 24 hours first of all, of course the main candidate who during most revenue on this sale has been really leave the club for about four months it is Frankie de Jong. Some decent updates about him. David Ornstein from The Athletic, number one source in the world probably right now, has come out saying that Frankie de Jong's arrival to Manchester United is looking increasingly probable difficult. So we did hear from Mike Verway from The Telegraph in the Netherlands that, oh, United's offer for Barcelona expired. They have to go back in and restart negotiation. But Sky Sports in the UK came out saying that, oh, May United actually retracted their offer for Frankie de Jong from Barcelona. So... Looks like right now that the 75 million euro plus 10 million euros the package that was agreed upon is no longer on the table anymore. I think De Jong has two options. It's going to be stay at Barcelona or go to Chelsea. I think that Chelsea right now, that's going to be quiet as well. They want a bad man. We'll talk about that, of course. But again, my prediction still stands. I feel like nothing will happen with Frankie De Jong from now until September the 5th. I think from now until September the 5th, he'll not take a salary reduction and he'll not leave. Nothing will happen. That's my prediction. That's my opinion. But of course, the club do want to resolve the situation as soon as possible. They want to know if they can bring in Bernardo or not. I think a sale right now, it's it's going to be a miracle to sell him at this point. We're, you know, again, one week and a few days left of the transfer window. Of course, Chelsea were in advanced negotiations about a week ago, so they can get the deal done. I think United now, too far fetching that they maybe offer the same, if not more, from the 75 million euro plus 10 million euro variable package. I'm not quite too sure. We'll wait and see, man. Same crap every single day. It's always flip flop turns. There's nothing big that's really happened on Frankie Young, I would say, in the past month, unless for the fact that Chelsea have ended the race and are in advance with Barcelona. So, wait and see on Frankie. Of course, the club they can choose. You take a salary reduction and stay. But of course, it does come down to the player. We'll wait and see what he decides. Now, another Barcelona player who Manchester United are interested in is Serginho Des. As you all know, over the past week, Chavi has been trying to push out Des from the club. The club have put him back on the market as well. They're desperate to try and sell him, waiting for some clubs to be interested. And Manchester United are the first club that actually has some concrete interest in him. Now, Edu Polo from Deportivo came out saying that Manchester United are closely monitoring Serginho Des, but he still does not want to leave Barcelona because he believes his qualities to be a starting player is still there. The club holds that he will decide to leave because they need to get minutes and play before the World Cup, of course. So United is showing some interest, nothing concrete. No talk with you know Des' side in terms of agent. And again, the club do want to sell him, but Des really, really, really wants to stay at Barcelona. He feels like he can be a Barcelona player and does have the quality. Of course, he came out. I think in the interview during the summer before preseason, like, oh, I had a lot of injuries. I think I can get into the team if I'm fully fit. So that's his point of view. But of course, the club do have a different point of view on the player. And also talk sport in the UK as well. Close to Manchester came out saying that Manchester United are considering signing Barcelona right back, Serginho Des, for 20 million euros. Des worked with Ten Hag at Ajax before his move to Barcelona back in 2020. So... They do have two right backs right now, United and Delo and Juan Bissaka. So one of them will have to leave for Dets to come in. Most likely will be Juan Bissaka on a loan, probably to some club in the Premier League. 20 million, the club want to sell him. Chavi doesn't want him. Decent price. I mean, I have no problem with it. I think we paid 23 or 25 for Dest. I think it was at the time, probably like, I think it was 23 plus 5 million euros in variable, something like that. So we lose money, of course, no doubt about that. But overall, not too much of a loss. Again, the club and Chavi don't want him. So I'll take 20 million euros. But again, it depends on who we can bring in to replace him. Will it be Juan Foyth, Thomas Mounier? I've seen a lot of people say on Twitter as well, which is a good point, not on Twitter, but you know, Instagram, other group chats as well, saying that. Isn't it better just to keep Des and bring in, you know, Thomas Mounier, which I do agree with. I think Chavi maybe would agree with that as well. But again, it's getting someone out right now. That way you don't have to get him out next summer kind of thing. So then you can bring in Mounier right now. Very, very low uh, price, maybe on a one-year contract. Then he goes for free next summer. Yeah, and it's all, you know, maybes and if buts and maybes and theories. So we'll wait and see how it works out. Again, we're getting now into the moment of the transfer window where clubs get desperate. If you want a striker, who do you go for? Memphis Depay. If you want a right back, who do you go for? Uh, so Junior Des. If you want a center back, who do you go for? Om Titi. If you want a decent enough striker at a low price, who do you go for? 
Martin Braithwaite. So I think this next week for Barcelona transfer window for in terms of departures will be very, very interesting. But again, United have shown some interest in Dest. Now, player's future at the moment that is very much in doubt and that can swing either way at the moment in terms of him staying or leaving is Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Now, Fabrizio Romano has come out saying that Chelsea have scheduled new rounds of talks with Aubameyang's camp this week. Todd Bowley wants to understand conditions of the deal, also on personal terms, and then it'll be time to submit a bid and Barcelona want around 30 million euros for the Gabonese striker. I am worried because Chelsea just signed some random player from Inter Milan, some youngster, for 20 million euros. They've got money. They're bidding 60 million euros for Anthony Gordon, some random winger at Everton. They have the money. They put the offer up front. I think he's gone. With the Bamiyang, again, very, very simple. There's a video of him coming back from a flight from Paris. He was at the Barcelona airport. They're all swimming him. They said, oh, what's wrong with Bamiyang? You're going to leave, blah, blah, blah. I said, I have no comment. I think it's very, very clear. Bamiyang is saying, look, I want to stay at Barcelona. I'm happy to be here. I'll be the backup for Lewandowski. No problem. But if you want me to leave, I will go to Chelsea. That's how it is. If Barcelona said that bid, that pretty much he's at Bamiyang. Get the boot. Adios, amigo. And then he will walk. So... We'll wait and see. I think if he does leave, it will weaken the squad. But if he does leave, you could bring in Bernardo Silva and Key, Frankie De Jong. You know, all these if buts and maybes, all these formulas and, you know, hypothesis and all these, you know. I want to keep a bad man. I'll be honest. I think having him as the uh, backup for the forward position is very, very important. Of course, Ansu Fati and Uzman Nabele do both have one knee. They can go down at any given moment. I guarantee you, with Uzman Dembele, every single after every single match, you'll hear from reports oh, Dembele mess, muscle fatigue, oh, hamstring injury. He'll be coming in left, right, and center, and same with Ansu Fati once he gets regular minutes as well. I think Aubameyang can play on the wings, play up front, will be a great option off the bench. And come, you know, deep part in the season, could be starting some games as well. Maybe Chai wants to change the system, 3-5-2, two, two strikers up front, Lewandowski, Aubameyang. That's disgusting. 4-4-2, four, four, two, two strikers up front, Lewandowski, Aubameyang. That's disgusting. So, we'll wait and see. I'm just worried for the fact that, that the only thing that worries me is that Chelsea have the money. It's not like they have... 20 million years to spend or we can only give you guys 15 or whatever it may be they have the money and they will spend it so the question now is will they pay 30 million euros as a package for a 33 year old striker we'll wait and see but again Thomas Tuchel wants him Tom Bull is in negotiation but Chavi and Barcelona want to keep a Batman now the final topic that I want to discuss before I end off this video is give you guys an update on the contract renewal of Pablo Gabe, as you all know, we had to wait for his birthday on August the 6th. That way, we could have given him a longer contract as he turns 18. It's you know, August 17th now, it's been about 11 days since his birthday. You might be wondering where the hell is his renewal. Of course, in the John Gamper, he was presented at number six. Everyone knows he's gonna get number six, he's gonna become a first team player, still wearing 30, blah blah blah. We do finally have an update coming in from Moises Malora from ESPN, and he's come out saying that La Liga have approved the cost of Gabi's first professional contract, but Barcelona see the close signings to sign the renewal with Gabi. Until then, he will continue with the number 30. So again, the club want to prioritize other outgoings and ingoings, of course, bringing in Alonso, registering Kunde, another fullback, maybe Bernardo Silva, Depay, Braithwaite, Omtiti, Maybe Obama departures right now. Other stuff to worry about. There's way other you know priorities. The window ends in about a week and a half. They got other things to worry about with Gavi. You can renew them on you know September the 30th. It won't make a difference from now until then. But the renewal, the contract has been approved by La Liga. Full agreement between Barcelona and Gavi. He will stay. He will renew. The question now is when will it be official? So that was my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. So if you guys enjoyed this video, if you did, make sure to leave a like and of course leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. We didn't talk about that much. Firstly, on Bernardo, but secondly and mainly in my opinion, on Juan Foyth. How much would you pay? Would you even go near that release cloth? And if we don't sign Juan Foyth, who would you go for? Thirdly, Frankie de Jong, quick thoughts on that. But again, another one more importantly, in my opinion, on Pierre Emerick Aubameyang. What do you think will happen? Will he stay or will he go to Chelsea this summer and Barcelona will receive around 30 million euros for him? Thoughts on Des and that United interest and also on Pablo Gave's contract renewal as well. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Take care and Forza Barca. Let's go, let's go.